Hey everybody, how are you doing? Uh, today I'm going to talk about installing WebUI Forge, which is a platform built on top of Automatic 11.11, meaning it is based on and incorporates core Automatic 11.11 files while producing images faster and using less resources, making this an ideal choice for all GPUs, but especially GPUs with lower VRAM. Uh, in fact, the speed improvements that Forge offers are most noticeable on lower end GPUs and it kind of tapers off with your higher end models. Now, if you don't know what a GPU is or what kind of GPU you have, then check out my installing stable diffusion video first before proceeding with this installation. It's important to note that Forge is not a replacement for Automatic 11.11. And the developers want to stress that that is not their goal. It's simply an enhancement to Automatic 11.11. If you're familiar with the Automatic 11.11 interface, adding Forge to the mix can give you speed and resource advantages that you can't get with the stock Automatic 11.11 installation. Forge also adds several additional sampling methods and more functionality within ControlNet, so it really is a worthwhile addition to your Automatic 11.11 installation. And it's a great way to add increased functionality while we wait for the release of Stable Diffusion 3. So in this video, I'm going to go step by step on how to install Forge. Uh, it's not necessary that you have Automatic 11.11 installed, but if you do, the two can coexist together nicely. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is open Windows Explorer, which we can do by clicking the Windows Explorer icon in the taskbar. Now, this is Windows 11. If you're on a different OS, uh, yours is going to look a little bit different. And if you don't have the Windows Explorer uh, icon in your taskbar, you can simply press the Windows key and the letter R at the same time. Then in the dialog box that appears, type Explorer and press Enter. I'm going to click the File Explorer icon. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to navigate to our primary drive. In my case, my primary drive is going to be C. And what we're doing here is we're going to create a folder to hold our newly installed Forge installation files. So once you're in your primary drive, you can right click anywhere and choose new and then folder and just name the folder whatever you want to name it. In my case, I have a folder already for my stable diffusion files. So I'm going to click into that folder and I am going to right click new folder and I'm going to name my folder Forge just because it's well I'm installing Forge and this is short and easy to remember. Okay now that we have our folder created uh, down in the description for this video you're going to see a link and that link is going to be to a GitHub page, uh, GitHub page for the installation files for Forge and go ahead and click that link and then what that's going to do is that's going to open uh, that page in your browser it's going to look like this and then scroll down until you see installing Forge and inside of installing Forge you're going to see click here to download one click package and that's what we want to do go ahead and click on that and that's going to go in my case right here. It's going to go into my downloads folder. Go ahead and save that. Now this is a somewhat large file, so it's going to take a little bit for this to download. All right, and the file has just about completed. There it is. We're done. Go ahead and close out of this. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our, uh, our downloads folder right here. We're going to find the file that we just downloaded. Right click on that guy. Choose cut. Now go back to the folder that we created earlier. I created mine in my uh, on my primary drive and my SD folder. I named it Forge. I'm going to go inside that folder, right click and paste. Now what we've effectively done is we have just moved that file from our downloads folder into the our Forge folder. Now that we're in our Forge folder, we're going to right click on the file and we're going to choose Extract All. Now this is a rather large file, so this extraction here is going to take a little while. All right, so once our file has uh, completed extracting, we can go ahead and delete the file ending in 7z. Go ahead and get that guy out of there. All right, and then what we're going to do is our uh, the folder that was created by the extraction of the downloaded file, go ahead and double click to enter that. And you're going to see a file in here. It's going to be called Update Bat. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to double click to run that now when we uh, when we double click to run it we're probably going to get a windows warning like this yes uh, this is windows 11 so if you're on windows 10 or any other os you'll get a similar warning just go ahead and uh, in my case i'm going to click more info and then run anyway this is real fast uh, this will run in just a couple seconds just like that we're done press any key to continue Okay, and now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to run the run.bat file. Now, this is going to be the same thing. We're going to pop up warning, more info, run anyway. And this is going to actually download the files from Git, and it's going to install them locally onto your computer here. So this is a somewhat uh, longer process. This usually takes anywhere from three to five minutes, I've seen. What you'll notice is that it's going to download a lot of files here, a lot of dependencies. And then towards the end, it's going to download a checkpoint model. The checkpoint model that it's going to download is going to be realistic vision. So once that's complete, we'll go ahead and uh, pick up and uh, launch the new Forge uh, web UI. Okay, our model has just about downloaded here. And in just a second, uh, it's going to open a browser window with the Forge web UI. There we go. All right, and we are now in Forge Web UI. And as you can see, it looks an awful lot like uh, Automatic 11.11. You'll see a few additional uh, tabs up here that you didn't have in Automatic 11.11. And also, if you scroll down, you're going to see a lot more integrated functionality uh, right out of the box with Forge here. And uh, well, let's go ahead and create our first uh, our first image. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do best quality um, raw photo, not fall. Let's do raw photo, uh, soft lighting, soft lighting studio. Nope. Studio fine art portrait uh, of a beautiful woman, 30 with long, oh, let's do wavy hair, wavy hair, wearing a red evening gown. Uh, let's do old master brown. Let's do a brown background. And let's do some Rembrandt lighting. All right. And uh, I don't use negative prompts. And I'm going to go ahead and set the height here. I'm going to set my height to 768. I'll leave the width at 512. Uh, I'll up my sampling steps to uh, roughly about 30. Now we only have one model installed because it downloaded it and installed uh, Realistic Vision. That's our only choice. So we're going to create this image here with Realistic Vision and let's see what we get. And there you go. There's our first image created with, uh, using Forge. And uh, let me create one more time. Fantastic. Okay. Now, the only thing that uh, I noticed on Forge here, I use um, a detailer a lot, and it is not installed by default on Forge. So if you also use an extension that you see is not here, what we can do is we can just go to our extensions here. We're going to do available, load from, and then in my case here, I'm just going to look for... Um, I'll do a control F and I'm just going to do detailer and not that one. Let's find another one. There we go. After detailer. Okay. So here's the one I want right here. This is a detailer. It's actually after detailer. I'm going to go ahead and click install. And as soon as that installs, There we go. It's installed. 
Okay, we're going to go back to our installed. We're going to apply and restart the UI. Apply and restart. All right, we're back in our UI again. And uh, all right, I'm going to recreate the image that I had created previously here. Go ahead and uh, put that prompt back in there. And I was at uh, 768 on the height, 512 on the width. I had my sampling steps at 30. And as you can see, my A detailer is now here. I'm going to go ahead and enable it, first of all. I will leave the first one at face. I will leave the second on eyes down here at the bottom. I'm going to change my detection up to about 7. Uh, somewhere right about in there. 0.72 is fine. Do the same thing on the first one. It's not really necessary since we'll only have one subject here. But this is just out of habit. I always uh, put my detection roughly at about 0.7. And let's see. Okay, we are good to go. 30 steps. Generate. And now what this will do is it'll generate the image and then a detailer will kick in and it will just... Um, there it is right now. It located the face. It's uh, improving the face. And then it improved the eyes. And there we go. And there's our final image. So that's going to do it for this... Uh, this short tutorial here on Forge. I think you'll find that Forge is a lot better than the standard automatic 1111, just in the image gen uh, generation speeds itself. There's a lot of improvements there. Um, the lower resources for people that only have, say, for example, four gigabytes of VRAM, you should still be able to run uh, Stable Diffusion using Forge here, even with as little as four gigabytes of VRAM. So that's a uh, that's a huge bonus there for people that have, you know, uh, older or lower end GPUs. And uh, there's also so much more added functionality within Forge here, straight out of the box, and that it's capable of. So I hope you enjoy working with Forge. And if you found anything in this video helpful, I sure would appreciate a like.